you know, you might have to literally try another internet connection. And if you, if you try, or if you, if you're like, that's not going to work. Um, what you can always do is you can basically make a picture or give me the date that you want. And then I can, I can go ahead and I can build that for you. Um, and we can get about seeing about printing it out. Cause I would hate for you to miss out on this. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody to miss out on this because of the connection speed issues and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what I have today. And if you, um, if you're still struggling, like it's not loading and stuff like that, why don't you go ahead and what you can do is you can use the, the solar system website that I've got and you can basically enter your date and then you can take a screenshot of that and you can send it to me and then I can work on, on doing that. I would really like you guys to be able to do this yourself so that way you get the experience with it. But I totally understand how sometimes like it's not because sometimes we actually run into this issue a little bit at the college. We have what's called thin clients and they're about a quarter of what your guys' Chromebooks are capable of doing. And whenever I try to run Tinkercad on them, it, it just freezes. It will lock up and do stuff. So we actually have to go to the computer lab. Uh, and so it works for me on a Chromebook, but like I said, sometimes I think it's just the connection speed that sometimes you have issues with. So I think that, that I'll have to make that as like a class announcement. I mean, everybody that's on this Zoom right now will be able to, to hear that. Uh, but I'll put up an announcement or I'll send out an email to y'all where if you're consistently just not capable of getting into Tinkercad and you know it's not working for you, then you can take a snapshot of the date and I can work with you on, I'll put that together for you so you can have a model to have printed out. But don't forget about Tinkercad. When you get back into school and you get back, you know, have a better internet connection or whatever, it is really a lot of fun to do a lot of these model stuff with it. It's just kind of tedious at the moment, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the first part and then we'll jump into the Tinkercad stuff. So let me go ahead and do a screen share. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is if you've had the chance, and maybe you haven't, or maybe you have, I don't know, uh, is if you were capable of seeing the Neowise Comet. Have you guys checked this out? So you might've been seeing some stuff running around on Facebook about this. So this is literally the Neowise Comet and it is only coming around every 6,800 years. So 6,800 years before it's planning on coming around again. And what we've got with that uh, is observers in the Northern Hemisphere hoping to catch a glimpse of the comet Neowise as it zips through the inner solar system before it speeds away into the depths of space. So this comet was literally just discovered back in March, at the end of March in 2020. And it was found using NASA's Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. So the acronym for that is NEOWISE. And so it's a recent comet that they've figured out uh, using their near earth detection stuff. And it's gonna be capable of being viewed for like the next couple of days. Uh, if we come down here, it gives us kind of like a generic position for July 23 through July 15th. This is from NASA site. I have another site here and let me actually, I forgot to do this. Let me drop this into the chat for you guys. Let me drop this into the chat. So I'll drop this one in. This is the one website. And then let me drop in the NASA one for you. So I put the two links into the chat for you there if you wanted to access these on your own. And so basically, this one gives a little bit more of a description here. Let me get up to the top of this webpage. So this is the Big Dipper. To locate the comet, you're gonna face west-northwest. And it really is pretty much right there at northwest. So think never eat shredded wheat, northeast-southwest, all right? So when you look up, for me, that direction is this way. North is literally this way for me right now. And so you're gonna to have to you know, figure that out. Most of the roads around here are going to go in a north, south, east, west fashion. So you can pull up your little Google Maps or you can figure it out with like a, 
you know, they have lots of like, um, they have lots of constellation apps that are out there. A lot of times you can get those for free that are capable of showing you like Google Sky is like a good one, Google Night Sky, where they have basically for Android. Uh, there's also a couple for Apple and stuff like that, but you shouldn't have to pay money for them, but they're capable of basically showing you where constellations are in the sky at any given time. But this one's gonna be in the Northwest. So face North and then think West and then Northwest is right in between those two. And if you can locate the Big Dipper, which is pretty prominent in the sky, you should be able to pick out the Big Dipper or as my daughter said uh, the other day, it looks like Maui's fish hook. She was like, look at that. That looks like Maui's fish hook in the sky. And I was like, I was like, ah, it's like the Big Dipper, right? So you locate the Big Dipper. This is where it's going to be based on the dates. So today is what, the 20, 24th? Yep. So it should approximately be, you take these two stars here, and it should be down in this general area. Or if you want to take the two leading stars on the edge of the Dipper, and come back, you should be able to pinpoint it. It should be in this general location. Now, here's the thing. It's in a section of the sky that is also the section of the sky where the sun sets. And what that means is, is that even if it says that sunset is at like 845, the sky is not going to be dark enough in that area to view this comet. You're going to have to wait the other day when we went out and saw this, I took my family out and we went and saw it. Uh, we, were, we were capable of seeing it around 1030 or 11. Uh, and so I think around 1030 or 11 o'clock at night is probably when it's going to be dark enough that you're going to be capable of seeing it. You know, because it's in the position and because it's on that side of the sky where the sun is setting, uh, it doesn't get quite as dark as quickly. And so around 11 o'clock at night, probably a good time to go out and see it. The thing is too, is that you have to have clear skies. So the last, like I think last night we had clear skies and I don't know necessarily what it's gonna be doing this evening, but you know, you're gonna be, this is gonna be the last couple of days to potentially see this comet before it goes away for 60, almost 7,000 years. And so um, I was also told uh, that you guys received journals as part of your upward bound stuff for the summertime. So this might be a really good opportunity for you to do some uh, what we call cross curricular activities and put a journal entry in about how you went out and tried to locate Neowise. And guess what? Even if you don't find it, you can still write about your experience, right? You can still write about that. Oh, it's super frustrating. I didn't find it after I looked, you know, so that way your great, 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 great grandchildren can check out what you wrote about Neowise when you were in Upward Bound. Or you can be like, I went out and saw it and it was super fantastic. Or you can be like, I went out and saw it and I was like, eh, cool. So, um, but utilize that journal, utilize that journal. Okay. Uh, and go out there and see if you can't find it. Now, the thing is, is that it's really, you can see it with your naked eye, but it's really good to, to bring along a pair of binoculars. If you've got something like that, um, I busted out my old pair that I got from my uncle when I was like 12 and they still work just fine. So what does it look like for various people? Let's take a look here. This is some of the pictures that we've been seeing and let me show you, let me show you my, my experience is that it did not look like this. Um, this is fairly accurate, but let me show you here. This is pretty good. It's almost as if somebody dropped an ink droplet and then used a paintbrush to just kind of feather it out. So this is pretty representation uh, of what you'd see. This is a pretty good shot. I don't know how they got that. Probably like a exposure. Uh, let's see here. There's a good one down here. This is pretty similar to what I saw. This picture right here, this is pretty similar to what we saw the other day. Now it was a little bit darker. Like see how you can tell the sun is set, but the light from the sun, right? The earth is not rotated enough that the sun is actually farther and farther down on the horizon, past the horizon. And so this area up here is what I'm talking about, where it gets dark enough that you can actually start making out stars. This area, there's still too much light pollution. You can't, and when I say light pollution, what I mean is you actually have too much light from the sun. And then here, you know, you're not gonna be able to see anything. So that's what I'm saying is wait until it gets around like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night before you go try to check this out. 
And from our experience, it was actually fairly decent in the sky. It was pretty high above the tree line, actually. Uh, and as you can see from their map at the beginning of this, it's only going to get higher uh, as July moves on. So it's going to get higher up in the sky as July moves on. So go outside, look to the northwest, make sure that it's decently dark outside, and you're going to be able to hopefully catch a glimpse of this comet that was only discovered back in March that's not going to come around for another 7,000 years. So that's kind of cool. Um, definitely get out there and check it out. Experience some part of space. I think that we also don't necessarily go outside and actually look at the stars very much uh, because we're busy on our phones doing all kinds of fun stuff in, at night. And so, you know, it's really trippy for me to think about like our ancestors that literally just had firelight, right? Firelight, oil lamps, stuff like that, uh, and about how different a world that would be. So anyway, check out this Neowise comet. Go see it because you're not going to get a chance to do it, you know? So take the opportunity while you can. So that's the first part of class. I just kind of wanted to talk to you a little about what's happening right now with like space. Uh, and, you know, it's a comet. So it's not a star, right? So what we're seeing is really just the effects of the of reflected light, if you want to think about it like that. And that trail that's coming off of the comet is basically the material that's busting off of it uh, as it heats up, the closer it gets to certain materials, such as the sun. So we have material being jettisoned from the comet that creates that tail. And as it moves through our solar system, there will actually be a time point where the tail of the comet is actually in front of it as it's moving forward. So it's really about the relative position of that comet to where the sun is, and then how much heating, you know, what it's made of, stuff like that. And so it's new, we're relatively new, we don't know much about it. So we're gonna be checking it out. So it's pretty neat. It's also pretty scary, because when you hear about NASA's satellites detecting near Earth objects in 2020, I'm kind of like, oh, we gotta, we got a comet coming. We got to get a meteorite coming towards us. So anyway, um, be sure to get out there and check it out. So that's the first part. All right. So for the second part, let me come over here. I'm going to do new share. And then let me pull up. Okay. So if you go to the Google Classroom, now this is a little bit different guys. If you saw this earlier today, if you pulled this up earlier today, I just replaced this homework within the last uh, 15 minutes. So I deleted our old homework for week four and I put up this new one. Okay, so if you got the old one, make sure that you reload the page so that you get what I'm seeing here, okay? And what we're gonna be doing is, is I've given you uh, an STL file that you're going to be able to work with in Tinkercad. So let me show you what that's like. The first thing that you want to do is you want to download this solar system template STL file. And when I was able to like, when I remade this assignment, I had the ability to make a copy for each of you again. So I don't know what that's about, uh, but everybody should have a copy and then what you can do is you can download the file. Now, you're probably not going to have any kind of program on your computer that's going to be capable of opening the file. And we don't actually need to open it on your computer. Because what we're going to do is I'm sharing this with you so that you can download it. And then you're going to upload it to Tinkercad. And let me show you what that's about. So first step is to get this file, the solar system template, and just download it to your computer. What you're gonna do then, once you've got that downloaded, is you're gonna come to Tinkercad. And I'm going to say, create a new design. And then I'm gonna say import. And you're gonna choose that template file 
that one that you just downloaded, you're going to choose import and you're going to choose, choose that template file. And what it should do is it should load it up on your workspace. And what that should look like, I'm going to back up here a second. What that should look like is it should look like this. So what you should be seeing is you should have something like this that's being loaded into Tinkercad. So if you go to our week four homework, you download this solar system template, this STL file, and then you come to Tinkercad and create a new project, you hit import, select the file that you downloaded, it should give you this. And what's really cool about this is, is that I've already kind of pre-done stuff for you. And I'll give you just a couple of minutes if you're capable of doing it right now. Uh, you can try it out. I'll give you just a couple of minutes to try that. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you, kind of give you a walkthrough of what we're going to be doing, what you can do with this to kind of finish up your model. So I'll give you just a couple of minutes to, to see if you can't download it and upload it yourselves. But everybody should have a copy of the STL file so that way you can upload it. So I was telling you guys about how my daughter said Maui's fish hook and stuff like that. She totally heard me talking to you guys about her saying that. And she was like, dad, don't do that. Like, it's totally embarrassing. Like, don't, don't tell them that I thought it was Maui's fish hook. And she literally just says, I can still hear you talking about me. So <laughs> tell her it made me so happy because I love Moana. Uh, Adrian says it made her so happy that you said that because she loves Moana. She says it's a good movie, though. So. Oh, yeah, totally is. So I think she's smart. Once I saw it, I was like, man, she is 100% right. Yeah, like, how lame was that person's life to look up at the stars and the thing that they came up with was a ladle? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> they're like, wow, what is this? Oh. The Big Dipper. Because <laughs> I know wagon wheels and chuck stew and ladles so i don't know it's probably got like a really interesting story behind it that i just don't know about so but yeah i like maui's fish hook more than i like the big dipper for my that's limited what i will knowledge. always call it from now on there you go okay so what i think i'm going to do now guys is i'm going to kind of walk you through so if you've got it up you can kind of watch me and follow through with this uh, or if it's, it's not working for you, go ahead and watch this video. Uh, watch me manipulate this stuff so you kind of have an idea of what you'd be, you'd be looking to do, okay? So this is what you should have. Now, this represents the solar system. We have a space in the middle for the sun, and then all of these rings that are basically embedded into this disk represent uh, the... Um, Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. Why can't I think of this? Represent their orbit around the sun. And so you've got all of the officially recognized planets, okay? And so we've got the sun in the middle. And then what you have here is I want you to take a look at this. Notice how both the text and this rod pass through the actual field that we're working with. See how they go past the zero point? That's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this rod to represent the planets. So if I come back here to the week four homework, I've also included this link for the solar system, basically the website that shows us where the position of the planets are. So what I would do is I would come here and I'm gonna select four, 
sixth month, January, February, March, April, May, four, six. No, four, six, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, they did it backwards. I want the sixth day of the fourth month, January, February, March, April. And then I want this back in 2008. So this was the planetary alignment when the Jayhawks won the national championship. And so what I'm doing is I can actually then use this slider to give me the positions of the other planets. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and work on these. So the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. I can take a look at it. And what I can do is I can come back here. Now this rod is supposed to represent the planets. So I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to, first I'm going to control C, control V, and now I have two rods. I'm going to move that one away a little bit here. And so I am going to grab this rod. I'm going to come up over here. And instead of a solid object, I want to make it into a hole. And I can drag it in. And I can look at my diagram. I'm going to say Mercury is right here. Come back here. And I'm going to line it up with that first ring. Looks pretty good to me. I want to do my next planet. Now you could copy paste these all at once so that way you have all of them. You know, a uh, really neat trick is you can grab both of them. You can do copy paste and now you've got four that are ready for you to go. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. The important thing is, is whatever you grab, and then you can also basically turn this into a hole and then copy paste it like that too. So I'm gonna drag the second one over here and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say, all right, Venus is right here. So I'm gonna put that one like right there. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna grab another one of these, make it into a hole. Now this one's gonna be my third one. This is the earth. So I'm gonna put this in one to the third ring and it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna put it right approximately like right there-ish. And you can use your, uh, notice how this is kind of like, doesn't move exactly how I want it to. Notice how it's kind of like, it's not exactly in there. You can adjust that by coming down here to the snap grid and you can tell it to move in half millimeter increments. And what it will do is it will make it center it a little bit easier for you. So I've got those three. I'm like, all right, I got that. So let's just do the last one, Mars for the inner planets. Let's find out where Mars was. Mars was all the way over here, so. I'm going to come up over here. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to change it into a hole. And I'm going to pull it over here. That yeah, looks pretty close to me. So this tends to match up. And so now, you know, what you would do is you'd keep on doing this until you get all the planets there. All right. And let me show you what you're going to do after that. What you would do is you would grab these so that you're selecting all of this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up here and you're gonna hit group. And when you hit group, what it's gonna do is it's gonna, gonna combine all of those, those rods that are holes in this major template. So watch what happens. What it's done is it's basically made a hole all the way through. And so now you've got your positions of all your stuff there.
So when this prints out, there should be a hole that's present there that represents where these planets are. So now let's talk about the date and your initials. If I come down here and I actually click on this, you'll see that this comes down. And what if I click on this arrow, I have the ability to edit the text that's there. So I literally can then change what's there. Now I chose four, six, eight, because that's when the Jayhawks won the national championship. I'm gonna put my initials there. And then what I'm gonna do is instead of having a solid object, I'm gonna make it into another hole. And remember what I said about how it extends out the bottom of the field here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this text and actually uh, John had mentioned something. To make this look right, what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to rotate this 180 degrees. Is it 180 or 90? It should be 180, right? Yeah. And so um, what we're gonna end up having to do now is now I can drag this and you'll see how it kind of disappears. Let's look at it from the bottom side. Because this is a hole, when I combine these two shapes together, the text and this block that I've been working with, what will happen is, is that it will subtract the text out of this template. So when I go to look at it, this will basically be embedded in the bottom. So it will be printed into it. So when I print it off, it will have holes through it that represent the planets and it will have your initials and the date on the bottom side of it. Now, you might have to position it if you don't want it to interfere with your holes or it may not be that big of a difference, you know, uh, since you're not gonna see this on the top side. And so this is how you can make your planetary model using the STL file that I gave you in the homework week four. So you can download it, open up Tinkercad, upload that to Tinkercad, and then do the process that we talked about. And now what if you're like, oh no, I messed something up. What am I gonna do? Well, you can always hit the back button, which is basically we'll undo this. And now notice how I should be able to see it. It might be kind of hard for me to click on it, but I have separated the date text from this. And if I click on this again, you can see that now I've moved it. And if I click on this one more time, now it slips around this way. So don't be afraid to hit the back button. You should be able to go back to the original model if you messed it all up, um, you know. And like I said, one of the easy ways to, to do stuff is you can literally select this. You can make it a hole. And then you can basically copy paste and now you've got two of them that are already holes. And I can grab these again. I say copy paste and now I've got those. And then if I do that one more time, I should now have all of them that I need to make my model, right? Because there should be eight of them there. And what's cool about the template that I already gave you is that you can see that these rods extend past that and then the text also extends past it. So you don't have to work with moving it up and moving it down and trying to move it around and all that stuff. Um, now, if you're like, I want these to be bigger, you can always change the size. And you can do that uh, by zooming in and then clicking on various tabs. Like if you wanted to make this bigger, like if we wanted to make this 3.0, that makes it a little bit bigger. 
And so what that will do is when we, can I move this up a little bit? There you go. That means that when we combine this stuff, let me back out. When we combine this, I'm gonna go up over here to group. That hole is gonna be a little bit bigger. So if you wanted to get, um, if you're like, I don't like these little holes, I wanna make it bigger. You can adjust the size of that yourself. And then if you wanted to get a little crazy and you're like, hey, I want Jupiter to be bigger than the Earth, you can do that as well. So you can adjust the size of the bars. Uh, and so this is really kind of up to you. So download that STL file, log into your Tinkercad, upload it, and then I think this video recording will be made available uh, for you guys to check out. Uh, so you should be able to then look back at this as kind of like a walkthrough guide. So that way you can kind of follow me and you can kind of do what I did to get a model. And then when you're done with this, you know, this will be in here and you won't really have anything like that. So you should have basically your holes and your date and your initials on there. You can export it and you can export it as an SDL file. And I believe that you should be capable of uploading that to the Google Classroom. And if you upload it to the classroom, and I think, and maybe I need some help with this, John or Adrian or Beth um, or Carissa, uh, I think you should be able to upload this as like a file. Can they upload it to the specific homework week four or do I have to make that an option? I'm trying to think, I don't, I'm, I haven't tried it like this before, but you should be able to basically, basically what I need you to do is I need you to export it as an STL file, and then we can get you the details so that you can send it to me. And whether or not that means that you can upload it directly to this, maybe I have to change some of the settings so that you can upload the file if you want or something like that. Uh, now for individuals that are, that are having a rough time with the Tinkercad, what I want you to do is I want you to basically, you can take a screenshot of this and then you can back it out a little bit um, and you can get your, your other planets in there so that way I can see. Or if you wanted to send me just the date in your initials, if you wanted just to send me the date that you want uh, and make sure to specify the day, the month and the year. Because remember, I, my date was four, six, eight, but that's, you know, uh, that's different than the way that they're representing it here. So if you send me just the date, um, make sure that you specify what month you want. Like you might want to write out the month. So there's no confusion on that. And I got a question from Brianna saying, so we just pick a date. Yeah. Um, I would like you guys to pick a date. That's kind of like special for you. So it could be your birthday. It could be a family member's birthday. It could be a time where something special happened to you. And you don't have to share that with the group because that could be a little bit personal, you know, like that type of stuff. I'm not asking you to share the, the sentiment behind that date. But what I am asking you to do is pick a date that's special to you. And then uh, if you can make the model, like what we talked about, and then what I'll do is I'll print it out with our 3D printer. And last time, I think, uh, I think Adrian ordered us the glow in the dark filament. And then I think we have a, uh, a, purple, a purple, purple filament as well. And then I've got lots of different other options. I've got like a green, I've got a marble, I've got an off gold, like I've got lots of different filaments that you can choose from. And then I will 3D print it out for you. And then we'll send it to you. We'll get this as like kind of like a keepsake for upward bound this summer. So uh, yes, pick a date, pick a date that's special to you for whatever reason. Uh, and then, you know, if you're struggling with the Tinkercad and you can't get it to work, you can always send me the date and your initials and I'll see if I can't make it for you. But I would really like it if you guys did this yourself, if you're capable of doing it. If not, I totally understand. Uh, but, you know, please try to, try to make it work on your end first. And then if you can't, totally get it send me the date and we can work with it on that. So that way I can start the printing process. So this week is just try it out, figure out your date, you know, catch up on stuff that if you've got stuff that you haven't turned in yet, make sure that you get on that. Cause I've, I've, I've been looking back and I've been seeing, I'm missing some stuff. We're in week four. So we got two more weeks to go. 
uh, and uh, get your work in and start working on this model so that way we can get it printed off. And then I think it'd be cool. So that's what I got for you today. I guess I'll let you guys get out of here about 10 minutes early. Uh, and so work on the model stuff, uh, check out the date and then get any kind of back work in that you don't have in. Uh, and then if you're having a trouble with Tinkercad, send me the date and I'll see what I can do. But make sure you specify the month, write out the month. Like I want the month and then the date. And, and like I said, you don't have to tell me, please don't tell me your, why it's special to you. Keep that as a secret for yourself. All right. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then we'll get it printed out. Thanks everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later.